Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 17. Look, I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think we're almost out of this uh, season of Real Housewives of Potomac. But we still got ways to go, guys. Yes. Okay, because we got a 10-part reunion after the season, okay? <laughs> Make sure y'all subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. You ready to walk us through this, uh, Blair? I'm ready. Let's go. Well, we start, we get clips of everybody. Uh, Wendy's preparing for her uh, show. Karen went to the doctors and the plaque buildup is gone. Yeah. And Ashley and Giselle are preparing for their GNA fashion show. Hey, Nice. NECA and Ike are at the doctor's office, uh -huh. and she is helping him get a sample for this IUI. Uh, we hear some mm, some ahs, some hurry-ups, and mm -hmm. we finally get the sample, and they actually inseminate her on TV. Look, I am not a witch doctor. Okay. I am not a um, person who practices witchcraft or anything like that. But I will say this, though. There is something, too, because as far as we know... Um, She's not pregnant at the moment, as far as we know in real time, right? Mm -hmm. There's something, too, when I think of these moments of making, like, something as babies, as transactional. I do feel like, hmm, I don't think it's going to work because the energy is not right. And something about her saying, hurry up to him <laughs> in that moment made me go, I don't think y'all going to have a baby during this time right here. Okay. Because y'all... Like, I'm not a, a cow that you just milk. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you, I, I'm not, we're not milking a baby out of me. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Right. Even though we're going through science and, you know, medicine has improved a lot, it is still a form of love. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Don't tell me hurry up <laughs> when we're making a baby, even though we're not doing it the way that, quote unquote, you know, the way, you know. Naturally. Naturally. Mm -hmm. We're still making a baby. Right. The minute you tell me, hurry up, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, the baby not going to be formed out of this. Okay. It still needs to be formed out of love. You get what I'm saying? Okay. That's just my opinion. But hopefully down the line, um, it works out for them, though. Okay. Well, Mia and Gordon are at another therapy visit. Yeah. Mia is committed to Gordon. She felt that he was combative and hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the first time she went to a divorce attorney, he emptied her bank account mm. to zero. To zero dollars. Well, she went behind his back to a divorce attorney. Right. And he found out. Like, my thing is, hey, if you go get a divorce... Like, include me in on that plan. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Don't let me find out that you're trying to leave me behind my back. Okay. Because then I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to take my money behind your back. Yeah. I, I, I really don't know what to say about it. I mean, I feel like these are things we've talked about. It was new to learn that he emptied out her bank account. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like, no, that's not right for him to take all of her money. But at the same time, was it his money that he put there? So I don't know. I don't know. He I feel probably, like I don't have enough information. He probably took her. He's probably just like leave with what you came with. The shirt on your back. He probably took her inheritance. Who knows? Like you know, <laughs> that's probably why she had a problem with it. Yeah. Well, Mia knows Gordon doesn't have a romantic side. Yeah. That was actually something she said that was going to make her not marry him, but they were able to push through that in premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. But she has learned to go without it. Mm -hmm. Gordon says that he's not getting the romance he seeks either. Mm. she's always on her phone or on social media yeah when he tries to touch or hug her she, he gets pushed off yeah she wants him to be the man that she met they turn to each other and they hold hands they do this exercise and he shares what he needs from her which mm -hmm. is time for her to listen to him and to not make him feel like an afterthought mm -hmm. he thinks they have one of the best relationships on earth in spite of the differences and mia is just uh-huh and okay and uh-huh oh, okay well, time. well, here's the thing. About, <laughs> well, here's the thing about Mia, right? Um, it is kind of disingenuous on Mia a little bit when she says she wants him to be the man that sh that uh, she met. What you mean, rich? Because he's not on the board no more. Yeah, he's not getting his same salary. Y'all had to downsize a lot. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I think a lot of her attraction to Gordon was that the fact that he was a man of power. Yeah. A man of money. You get what I'm saying? A black virgin or her version of Michael to Ashley. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So the minute that he lost that, 
all of a sudden you're not the man that I married? Of course he's not. Mm-hmm. He's not. He he's at home. He's he's a shell of himself. There's something about um, and and, and I'm sure Mia wouldn't have no problem with saying this. Mia know or knew at the point that she was quote unquote a gold digger. You get what I'm saying? She went after Gordon because of who he was, and Gordon didn't hide it either because of what he had. He mm-hmm. left his family mm-hmm. and things like that, and he used what he had, mm-hmm. his power, his money, his status, to attract uh, Mia. So now that they actually don't have those things that held them together, now they actually have to like each other. Yeah. And they realize that they don't like each other mm-hmm. as a person. Mia is going to be on the phone looking for her next, her next, her, her next client and things of that <laughs> nature. Her next uh, come up, and Gordon will be like, "Hold on, I thought, I thought you would at least like me. Like we have." children together now you get what i'm saying we've been married and things like that i thought you would at least like me like no i don't like you but see at the same time i think that she'd probably be able to stomach and i feel like with him losing his job and losing a house and all this type of stuff he probably has turned into a more angry or difficult person to live with Mm. and i can believe that but i feel like if he had all the money and the accolades she'd be able to deal with whatever attitude he had but with you being broke and you got an attitude nah Dude, you think it's the attitude? I think it's the broken, smaller house. No, and I think the attitude. I, I think if he had everything now, I, else... I think he always had attitude, though. Huh? I think he always had an attitude, though. Okay. Like, like usually men with men like that, if, if the relationship is completely transactional, they don't really see you as into shoot me or some bill they don't really see you as a person. Yeah, they but that's s- what I'm saying. It's all of it put together. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Mia was cool with that. Yeah, Be- until he lost the money. And, until he lost the money, because mm-hmm. like, and now it's very annoying how the way you talk to me and treat me, because you can't get me nothing. I can get you something. <laughs> <laughs> I just you I, can't do nothing for me. I, so no, I'm not going to deal with you. I can do something. Listen here, mm-hmm. we saw or at least heard from the beginning of the season three years ago when we started this uh, franchise and stuff like that for this season. We saw that when. Gordon was going through what he was going through with the whole uh, job thing, of the whole family business thing. Mia didn't even say we are going through a lot. She said Gordon, yeah, is going through. Like she quickly was like, "Oh no, that's his problem." She didn't see it as an our problem. So I think Gordon, in some ways, felt hurt and abandoned by his own, <laughs> his family, his own wife. You get what I'm saying? And to your point, that does it excuse him or, or should make him be mean but i'm like if he always been mean if he always didn't have a romantic side and he just uses money to cover it mm-hmm. it's like and plus he's an older man like people some people get meaner as they get older yeah so but also at the same time i feel like um this is another kind of testament to gordon not listening because mm. he said all the people kept telling him was that he wasn't listening as to why they had to get him out the business. I'm mm-hmm. sure at some point they explained to him what he was doing, but after a while they, they got tired of explaining it and just said, you know what, you just don't listen. I'm sure people told him <laughs> I'm sure people told him not not to get with Mia. Yeah. And for me, I'm just like Mia has put on the table her issues mm-hmm. and all this type of stuff, but he wanna sit here and say they have the best relationship on earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm done true. explaining. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time as <laughs> Believe much what I, you want. As much as I agree with that, Mia's Mia's word don't hold no weight in this relationship. Uh, unfortunately, it's because I think it's the both of them. I think I think they both are. I mean, no, no, no. They are both tra- trashy. <laughs> <laughs> they both trashy. Uh-huh. But it's very hard for 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 me to actually take you seriously if I can buy you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like like if I can buy you, that literally means I own you. Mm-hmm. So I can treat you how I want to treat you because you have showed yourself that you can be brought. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, next, Candace has her therapist come for a house call. Yeah. Candace was really nervous. Like, she was, like, really, like, seemed very jittery before he got there. But I figured it was because of what the conversation ended up being. It seemed like she might have been nervous to have that conversation. Okay. But she sits and talks to the therapist. She really wants to be a mom. And mm-hmm. she's worried that she might have waited too long or wanted to do too many things before motherhood. Okay. Um, she wonders if she uses her career as an excuse or if she even deserves to be a mother. She really wants a child. And the therapist says that he can see it in her eyes that this is the season for that to happen for her. What did you think? Um... I can understand Candace's concerns. I think she's mid to late 30s. 
Um, I don't even know if they've even tried having kids yet, but I think she is like afraid to try for multiple reasons. One, which they showed the flashback of like how her relationship with her mom is. Her mom hit her upside the head with a purse and all that type of stuff. (laughs) So I think she's like nervous to possibly treat her child like her mom treated her. Like she doesn't want to be the same type of mother Mm -hmm. Um, at the same time. I do, in a way, feel like she might be busying herself to distract her from that want and maybe dealing with her fears around the kids. Mm. So, Yeah, that's very interesting. I'm always interested in people who come from those type of relationships. And um, even though it's not hereditary, um, there is something to seeing it and basically practicing what you see. Yeah. Right? I'm the type of person to where I don't need to touch the stove to know that it's hot if I saw the person before me touch it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? A lot of things I haven't been through because I've seen people go through it, and I'd be like, I'm going to use that as a reason not to go through it. So I, I find it very interesting how people like see like the mistreatment, using Candace as an example, as a muse, rather, that my mother treated me this way, and I may have a fear that I may turn it to my mother. But you got the cheat sheet. Yeah. <laughs> the cheat sheet is, okay, I know how my mother treated me. So I'm going to intentionally not be my mother mm-hmm. in this aspect, especially in a simple aspect of taking a purse and, 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 and way laying it against the side of my head. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So, so there's, there's definitely something to that. Um, I would like to see, and I need to understand that this is not married to medicine. This is housewives of Potomac, but I would have liked this scene to be with her and Chris yeah. talking to the therapist because um, it takes two to tango. Mm-hmm. It takes two to make a thing go right. That's why it takes two. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I think it would have added more depth, um, and and more um, more insight to why she felt that way because Chris would have been able to ask some questions. He knows her. He been around her more than the therapist just listening to to what he's saying and just saying like you know what well, this is the time for y'all to have a baby all right brother yeah. you know what i'm saying like i i think it would have been served better if chris was there and she would have expressed some of that feelings and some of that emotions to her husband yeah yeah well mia met with an editor yeah and they want to do a spread on the ladies of housewives of potomac okay. so they all meet up to do this photo shoot and everyone except for NECA because the editor didn't know who NECA was. Wow. Um, so, because the season hadn't aired yet. I mean, but still, I'm, I'm, on, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the show. So, everyone gets an icon that they have to emulate in these pictures. Go slowly with this, Blair. Robin gets Mariah Carey. Do you agree? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Karen gets Lena Horne. I think I, I think I like that one the best. Yeah, I, I think so too. Giselle gets Beyonce. I heard somebody said use Vanessa Williams instead, and I, I thought was, that would have been better. And I was like, that I didn't think of it until until they said it. And I was like, oh, facts. Yeah, facts. Ashley said to you, uh, Ashley is uh, Dorothy Dandridge. Okay, I like that. I like that. Mia is Pam Greer. Didn't, I didn't see that for uh, her at all. I think they, I think they are, um, playing up Mia's sexuality. Okay. Um, more to that, Pam Greer is was was viewed as a beautiful black woman back in the day even now like things like that but um yeah i ain't see it either mm-hmm. wendy was cheryl lee ralph i like that one i actually didn't i i kind of wish they would have pulled someone from like the past someone okay. a little and i know cheryl lee ralph has been around for years mm-hmm. but she is still very much relevant still making waves still winning things like yeah. she is still like in her prime, mm-hmm. at least to me. Mm-hmm. So I would have liked to see some somebody, just pref- preferably, just like who's maybe like career is like over or, or whatever the That's case true. may be. That's true. Um, and then Candace was Diana Ross. Completely confused on this one. Yeah, I, I didn't get it. And then I don't think they gave her a big wig in the photo shoot when we saw the clips either. I'm um, like, so. I, I I didn't see that at all. Yeah. I didn't see it at all. Well, Juan and Robin are out looking for a space for her Glow 30 franchise, which is going to be the membership membership based franchise for like uh, facials. It's nice mm-hmm. to see Juan again. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's very nice to see Juan again. So Juan asks her, "What's the budget?" Okay. And she don't know. <laughs> and the lady asks, says, "Well, we charge like six, six, pretty much sixty eight thousand five hundred for the space." Mm. She wants to open the franchise for stability with Juan losing his job. They need to diversify their income and they also don't want to be relying on an employer. Let me stop here for a second, right? Based on what you told me, teacher, Blair's the teacher, she told okay. me some background and some um, 
information on Potomac before we start reviewing it. I think Juan gave Robin money to invest. Yes, back in the day. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. Seasons ago. She lost that money. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I guess the person she chose to invest with was Shiesty. Yes. Right? Now, she's about to do something else. Granted, this could be with her money this time. Mm-hmm. But you lost your money, Juan, to the point where you divorced her basically for it. Yeah. Because you were broke. Your whole NBA career, gone. And now, y'all about to go into this other business thing that Robin is spearheading. Mm-hmm. And you asked her, what's the budget? And she said, I don't know. Wait a minute. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I got PTSD. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What do you mean you don't know the budget? So, basically... In order for you to stay open at this space, you need to bring in at least $68,000 a year. Mm-hmm. To break even. Right? To For you to for us to not evict you from here. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So basically, to have a profit, you need to make more than $68,000. And that's just for the building. Mm-hmm. You got to employ people. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to pay them. You ain't doing it yourself. Salaries. You right? Mm-hmm. You to live off of. You have okay. Oh, you, you have to pay them. So potentially you have to double. Yeah. You have to make over a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for you to even think about paying yourself. Mm-hmm. And you walk into this with a, I don't know the budget. One. Yeah, I I did roll my one. roll my eyes when I heard her say she don't know. I was like, what What are we doing? I'm here? not even gonna hold you. <laughs> Why are we even here? And I don't even dislike <laughs> Robin the way y'all do, but man, I'd be like, no, cut. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Let's go home. Yes, or I'm going home. You know what I'm saying? It's an elegant city. I'm gonna go to the nail salon that's right there down the street where I was with my coach and whatever. Uh-huh. I don't want nothing to do with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Stay woke, brother. Honestly, like, it does seem like a good business idea. And I do like the idea of them having and owning something to have this income, whether Robin stays on the show or not, whether Juan, you know, gets another coaching job or whenever he gets another coaching job. So I think it's a good idea. I don't know about that, though. I just hope that it does well. And I would hope that Robin would kind of flush out some of the... um, uh, what do they call it? The um, logistics. Logistics. Yes. But I don't think she knows the logistics. Like so, is is. But I'm like, think about the logistics. I felt like we went into the building like with nothing in our mind, maybe, like like just emptiness. Maybe. I mean, it <laughs> like really nothing was nothing in mind. I mean, maybe <laughs> like like the reason why I say it's it's more sketchy, and when I say sketchy, I don't mean like it's a scheme, but it's it's risky rather. Yeah. Because it's a franchise, like. Think of McDonald's, right? Yeah. You you should can own a franchise of McDonald's, but that doesn't make you an owner of McDonald's. Meaning that if meaning your McDonald's on your block can do bad and we can just shut that down. Yeah. And McDonald's will keep going. Mm-hmm. So Glow 30, her her location can do bad. You know what I mean? So I'm very interested in what she's gonna do to basically with all this um face care and all this stuff that's everywhere, literally. We got YouTube channels that actually make you do it yourself and things like that. What makes your experience very different and unique from all these other places that do the same thing? But I I feel like if I were to give a piece of advice, which Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that these are things that they're probably thinking about. Listen, Robin. (laughs) Listen, Juan. Blake got y'all. Is access and ease. So, like, you put it in a neighborhood. Oh. I think it's in Ellicott City. Ellicott City, yeah. So, mm-hmm. if it's in Ellicott City, then you have, like, people who are will be willing to pay whatever oh, yeah. it, it costs mm-hmm. um, to get that done. And then, especially, if you're able to do it to where, like, it's, like, a European wax center. I don't really know the Glow 30, like, business model. Mm-hmm. But if it's, like, the European wax center where you can book your thing, go in get it done in, you know, your 30 minute to an hour time and then be about your day. Like you can get like hundreds of people in. So, um, if it's just like easy to get to, you can easily book an appointment online. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I want to get a facial at three o'clock today, book it, get it done. Then, then that would be awesome. So I think that, that would be the key. So the key is always customer service. If you have terrible customer service, you're not going to last. That that too. And my whole Mm -hmm. fear is commercial real estate is not really, um, it's not really on the up and up right now, but things always flip. 
Things yeah. always go in a circle. So we'll see. Is there anything else that happened in the scene that, like, even with them talking and things like that, them expressing themselves, that, like, that needs to be pointed out between Robin and uh, Juan's new business venture? No, that's pretty much it for that. But she does eventually tell Juan that Giselle's dad is in the hospital. Yeah. And she calls Giselle to check in on her. And um, she, so apparently Giselle went to go visit her dad. Mm -hmm. And in the confessional, they asked Giselle what's going on with her dad. And she says, we'll talk about it later. What Robin did, actually ends up telling us that her dad has brain cancer. Mm, what did you think about Giselle skipping the question? Um, to me, like, I can understand that it's a sensitive topic. And, you know, she probably would have gotten really emotional talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like she should have talked about it. I, I don't think it's fair that Giselle gets to skirt around things that she doesn't want to talk about or feels uncomfortable talking about um yeah. i don't feel like she had to go into deep detail but she could have said what was going on yeah i think like giselle makes it her job to not show us herself yeah so it's easy for us to just view her as a robot someone who doesn't have feelings someone who doesn't take in nobody else's feelings because we don't really see her in her feelings mm -hmm. and my thing is she said we'll talk about it later now that we know what happened in real life in real time and things like that uh, uh definitely prayers to the family and things like yeah, that he passed. yeah mm -hmm. i don't think she want to talk about it now yeah <laughs> dude you get what i'm saying yeah like like i don't know when like, would be the perfect time it, it, i so. don't see her talking about it at the reunion to be honest no i really don't see that being the time and place to talk about that so i think um like, don't tease me. Mm -hmm. Don't say we're going to talk about something. We're not going to talk about it. I think it just would have been like, my father's sick. He has uh, brain cancer, and, and we just keep him in our prayers and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Wendy is about to shoot her pilot. Yes, Wendy. Apparently, they went over budget. Of course. But she does has, have multiple pro uh, high-profile guests, mm -hmm. and they record the pilot episode and now, it seemed to be a success now here's the thing we don't know if it's a success because you know why right i watch because y'all don't <laughs> i watch wendy's channel okay and she's actually releasing the pilot episode today i thought she had other stuff posted she had other stuff posted but she did not release that pilot episode that episode with all the women that panel yeah that gets released today but then i saw somewhere where she said this is like the season finale i understand what you're saying I'm speaking. I'm speaking specific. I'm saying it's all very odd. A pilot. A pilot episode is supposed to be the first, the first episode. One. Yeah. But the first episode that she posted on her channel under this talk show thing wasn't that episode. Oh, okay. That's this this episode that she shoot for the for the uh, show that's getting released today, as in Monday. Oh, okay. And things like that. Make sure y'all go watch it. Okay, because they meant they, they wanted to make sure they was laughing and things like that. They showed us little things. Make sure y'all watch Wendy's show. My only problem or my opinion that doesn't matter, Wendy, is that I felt like um, for what she's doing, I felt like the reason why it's over budget because you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. And many times when you don't have the intel or the knowledge um, and knowing what you're doing, you overshoot. Okay. So, so you think you need 10 cameras. You think you need... 10, 10 staff members. You think you need writers for a show that's going to go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Where really, it doesn't take all that. Yeah. You want people to fall in love with you. And you want people... This may actually seem like counterproductive, but it actually works. You want people to feel so invested with you that they see your growth. Yeah. You don't want people to come in and, and basically become fans of you when you already seem prime and ready. People feel more invested when, like, I remember when they had that white wall behind them. Mm -hmm. I remember when they had them signs on the table. <laughs> I remember they had that black table. Now look at them. You get what I'm saying? You want people to feel like, I I know about them. And y'all yeah. and, and, and y'all newcomers, y'all wasn't there when, when, like, Chris and them was doing this and things like that. You want them to feel invested in your come up. Well, the only reason or why I kind of disagree with that for her a How little so? bit it's just because that she, I feel like she has to come with a level of professionalism. Um, and, what do you mean? And as far as uh, how the production is going to look. With her being on this successful show on Bravo, mm -hmm. um, with her being a commentator mm -hmm. and all this type of stuff, like, I do think that she could have definitely budgeted down. I don't think that she needed to do all that she did. Um, but I do think she needed a certain level of production for 
um, the visibility that she has. I disagree 100%. Yeah. Because I want people... Cause if well, My thing is, if I was on a TV show, was I was up here doing all this stuff, I got my body done, I spent money on all this type of stuff, yeah. and I got this big house, I don't want somebody coming over to my YouTube talking about, I got a janky YouTube, but I spent money on all this other stuff. But it... But, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't have to be janky. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm not saying that it, she had to mm -hmm. have, like, a janky or uh, really... Um, newcomer type of looking YouTube. Yeah. But I feel like she, because of her status, she had to come with a certain production value. I don't necessarily know if it had to be like $20,000 over budget that. though. I understand so. that. Because mm -hmm. with her, my thing is the reason why I say that is because there are some people YouTubes that you watch because it just looks good. Yeah. And I'm like, Wendy, you're not that. Mm -hmm. You you shouldn't aim for that. You should actually, people should tune into you for your expertise because you're smart. And that's basically what Wendy is selling us. She basically said, I got these panels of the successful women and things like that. And we're going to talk about issues that no one else is talking about. So I'm like, if you're going to talk about issues that no one else is talking about, put the issues on the forefront. Mm -hmm. And everything else you can build up. But if you have all this beautiful stuff and things like that, and you can't keep the maintenance on it, if you can't afford to pay the people to work on this expensive thing, then it, it, it's, it's all for naught, in my yeah. opinion. So, yeah. Okay. But good luck to y'all, Wendy. Yeah. Because my, in my opinion, her YouTube is not making her money for to support all of this. Yeah, it's for her, her production. It's her real mm -hmm. job that's paying all this stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, let's see a profit before I hire people for for this YouTube thing. I agree so, with that. So I say, hey, get get that camera, get that phone, tripod, set it up, and things like that. The way y'all do TikToks before they ban it mm -hmm. and things like that. Talk about issues. Do like some lives where you're talking, connecting, seem more personal, make people get inside of you, learn, let them learn who you are besides the character that you show on the show. Because a lot of people will say that they like you, the real person, than the person that you are on the show. So I'm like, let them see that and then let's build up. But I don't know nothing. And my thing is, I liken it to Candy. Like, I like how Candy has her stuff um, where she, she interviews like her castmates and, and people like that over on her channel. And it looks nice, but it also doesn't look overproduced. And with Wendy talking about how she wanted it to feel like you were like at a friend's house or hanging it out, chopping it up, da, 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 all this type of stuff. Like it was very much, I mean, I'm not going to say what it was given or what it wasn't because I didn't watch the full episode. Wow. But, but for you to go over budget to that extent, I'm just like, to get that feel, you didn't have to spend twenty something thousand dollars over or more than that. hundred percent. So, um, but, but I also, if I had to compare to like Doctor Heavenly's channel, I wouldn't advise Wendy to do something like that, like being in your closet recording and just sitting up and talking like that. I, but but but, but mm -hmm. nobody said that. Though. No, but I'm just I'm just giving my. And some would say, opinion. and guess what? Even if she do that, Doctor Heavenly makes money off of her YouTube. I know, but I'm saying Wendy wanted a certain production value, and I'm just trying to give a visual. Yeah. of what I could see to, her going for. If you want people mm -hmm. to feel homey and feel like they know you, you got to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You have to show your flaws and things like that. And I'm not saying you be shooting in the bathroom, showing the bathroom sink behind you, but you you don't want to make you, you don't want to make people feel like they just into it for a character. If you want to give this homey feel, you got to make me feel like I'm a homie. Yeah. And things like that. But Wendy, I don't know nothing. I only got a thousand subscribers. Yeah. I don't know nothing about nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, Giselle gets back to Maryland in time for their fashion show. Yeah. Ashley is getting her hair and makeup done. And Giselle is talking to them about how she dropped all the balls and how the team really carried her, specifically Ashley mm -hmm. and um, the coordinator that they had there. Okay. So Karen checks on Giselle mm -hmm. and basically Giselle tells her, just pray for me. Mm -hmm. Wendy tells Ashley and Giselle, congratulations. She doesn't go over and hug Giselle, but mm -hmm. she's like, congrats, girl. <laughs> Listen here. Um, I think at that moment, I think Karen knows what's kind of going on in detail and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very, um, it's very nice to see because they are, they are enemies on Tuesdays and friends on Wednesdays and things like that for Karen to be like, okay. If you need anything, reach out to me. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, everyone arrives, including Sharice, Ashley's mom, mm -hmm. and Deborah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> we get a little scary music when she walks in the door. Mm -hmm. Well, the fashion show begins, and Karen says that it's giving more booty call nightwear mm -hmm. than athleisure. 
um, Wendy sees a top that she wore and got flack for on their past trip. And now they've got something similar in their collection. Mm -hmm. Robin says it's more leisure than workout, but she's happy that they pulled something together. Everyone's like, it's cute, but it's not exercise. And this is my, my only um, thing. And it ain't no point of giving my expertise because this is obviously something just for the show. GNA is not a real thing, guys. No, they're not selling right? this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You got to have a goal and achieve that goal specifically. Like, it, all right exercise mm -hmm. <laughs> like like i don't see anybody working out in these clothes i don't even know if you can work out in these clothes and things like that yeah they and all that, look like plastic and, and that went away from their yeah. overall mission statement mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying so yeah i definitely was laughing with wendy when she was like yeah y'all criticize me about the thing i won now i see it here and i'm like that's 100 percent facts wendy mm -hmm. that's 100 percent facts well after the fashion show mia tells the ladies that giselle's dad is heading into surgery in the morning yeah candace says that she can wish people well from a distance mm -hmm. and that's what she's gonna do mm -hmm. wendy says that when my mom was in the hospital you guys were dragging me and my mom and giselle was making fun of my mom so she don't have no grace to give giselle Stop right there for a second. Wendy, no. Wendy's putting 20 on 10. <laughs> no, Wendy. First of all, I think with Wendy, um, it's funny because usually you find Candace in these situations. But to see Wendy in this situation is actually interesting because you ever had those people that like, hey, there's, hey the time and place is not now. Yeah. And Wendy didn't realize that, hey, even though we're on the show, we're not actually be in the show right now mm -hmm. when mia called that group together it was for her to basically inform them like hey this is what's going on in real life i know we got cameras and we all playing a character i know candace you hate giselle and like robin you don't want to be friends with candace and wendy you don't want to do that but right now we're having a show meeting in the middle of the show yeah and i'm just letting y'all know what's going on in real life and mm -hmm. in real life giselle father is is in danger yeah. and things of that nature and wendy just I guess she missed it and continued to go on with the show. Mm -hmm. Like she basically just was like, well, you know, my mother when when uh, my mother was in the hospital for this uh uh selective therapy, uh, the selective surgery, elective surgery, uh, elective uh -huh. surgery and things like that. She made fun of her, and then on top of that, like she didn't agree with her with the whole shrine thing. So I was like, wait a minute, we're not doing the show right now. <laughs> we're having a we're having a meeting in the middle of the show, talking about things that's going on outside the show. And honestly, that I don't feel like Mia said it for them to do anything with that information. She honestly just told them what was going on, unless I missed something. But I, if I was Wendy, and honestly, like Giselle has been rude to her, and Giselle didn't care that Mia threw a drink and, and threw a purse at her head. So if I was Wendy, I probably would not be too concerned about what's going on in Giselle's life. But I wouldn't have said anything. I would have been like, okay. But that's... Okay. But I do think there's something to... Like, the whole point of the show is that we make money off of our relationship. We, I, I, I show you my life. I get paid for my life. Conflicts and things of that nature, how we get along, we make money from that. In order for us to make money and for this to be a good show, it has to be a dance. It has to be something. Yeah, I have to have a dance partner in this. And that's why I'm going to use Candace and Giselle as an example. The reason why the franchise is suffering is... Is because we're not seeing them dance. Right. You get what I'm saying? We don't want to see how people act in real life in the sense of, oh, we don't like each other. We ain't going to talk. Mm -hmm. That's real life. But on the show, we supposed to talk. Y'all supposed to have some type of confrontation and things. Excuse me. And things of that nature. For Wendy to go on and to continue the show, in my opinion, I'm like, Wendy, you don't want to say what you said on camera, especially with what we know now. You get what I'm saying? I feel like Wendy should have just, to your point, to stay quiet. Yeah. Cause I'm like, if Candace can say what she said in the sense of a, I wish her well from afar. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why do Wendy got to be the one to spearhead? Well, I ain't worried about giving Giselle grace because she didn't give me grace because when my mother had elective surgery, she didn't say nothing about it. I'm like, wait a minute. What are we doing here? Yeah. I just felt like she said too much. I'm like, wait a minute. Like this is, <laughs> this is a little much Wendy. You put a little 20 on 10. She, I think she said too much, but I don't think she's wrong for feeling how she feels. But I don't, but here's my problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think she feels that way. I think she's playing to the character on the show. Well, I can't speak to that. Wendy, I, when Wendy, I don't get authentic. I don't, I don't. I feel like that was just a disingenuous moment from Wendy where she was playing for a moment. I don't know. I feel like Wendy because just don't I care. feel like for someone to say that, hey, 
I'm uh so and so father's in the hospital. Emer- he he's in the emergency room and things like that. And basically, he got surgery in the morning. For you to keep playing up to the role of like basically, Giselle hate my mama. I'm like. And I and Giselle never made fun of her mom. And that's, so, and th- like, that's, that's why, not even true. And so. that's why I'm like, what are you playing here? What are you trying to convey here? Is this like this is not a moment to make Giselle look like the villain in, in this moment. Every other moment you can say that. When when she was having the whole fashion show with the clothes and things like that, this was actually supposed to be like a regular moment. And Wendy just took it to a place that I was like, You're doing too much, Wendy. Yeah. And and, and more times than not, that's how we kind of feel about Wendy's character, well, let me not speak for Blair. That's how I feel about Wendy's character on the show. I feel like Wendy does a lot. Yeah, I feel like Wendy's cool for the most part, but she's been weird over this NECA situation. Like, like yeah. she does a lot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't even know if you really feel that way or are you playing in front of the camera? Yeah. So that's why I'm like, I just felt like she used this moment to play in front of the camera besides just, like, be regular. It was well, weird. Deborah comes over to the ladies' um, section. Mm-hmm. 9.56, after production wrap, Yeah, Ashley asks, are the cameras down? Yeah, Ashley asked that. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Deborah then asks Candace, do we need to talk? You, you're out here calling me Sesame Street, but you don't say anything to my face. Mm-hmm. And Candace is pretty much basically saying, somebody can get this girl. Somebody. Kiana hops in and says, this is not the place. This is not the time. And then we start hearing a little bit of rumble and people yelling stop. And just so y'all know, um, so we can paint the scene a little bit better, the, cam- the cameras are down. The screen is black. We only hearing it. Yes. And things like that. What did you think about this scene? I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because I saw the fight on mm-hmm. social media. Yeah. So I guess it was interesting to hear how it got started. Mm-hmm. And Deborah just going over there, just starting a mess. And I... I don't really have much more to say other than, okay, we see how it started. I don't have much of an opinion. What about you? I think we all allegedly, and when I say all, I'm talking about social media. We all think Ashley will not be back next season. Mm. Based on how she came in the car, talking into the camera. And I think this is the reason why. Um. I think Ashley is, the things y'all hate Giselle for, I don't understand how y'all don't hate Ashley for. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Ashley is the puppet master of a lot of things. I think she invited this girl knowing how she felt about Candace and put Candace in a dangerous situation. Okay. In the sense of, um, cause I go back to when they was out in Austin and Ashley said was what, what is her name? Deborah? Yeah. What Deborah said. She said, you say a lot of things on Twitter. This is what Ashley said to Candace. You see a lot of things on Twitter, but you don't really say nothing to our face. And to hear Deborah say the exact same thing and her being Ashley friend, I'm like, oh, you came here wanting to fight Candace mm. and things like that. And I think Candace was trying to avoid her because she was like, you're doing too much. You're trying to get some camera time, some air time and things like that. And Ashley, quote unquote, asking is the camera's down and for Deborah to do it when the camera's down. I think like, OK, this kind of this look like a setup. Yeah, that looked intentional. It, it looks like a hey, I'm I'm coming and I'm going to basically I'm the legend things. So I'm a legend things. I feel like Deborah was like, I'm coming and I'm going to beat up your your little castmate. OK. And 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 I don't want it on camera things like that, because I'm like, Deborah did come there looking fight ready. Like she didn't look coming. Dressed to the nines. Right, like to everybody. like sit and be no, perched. No, no, she, she came there to get mm-hmm. active. Right. And for Candace, and the reason why I say that based off what I heard, based on what they showed us, um, for Kiana, her name is Kiana? Yes. For her to step in, it had to be, it had to look like, oh, Deborah was about to put hands on this girl. Okay. Because the only way that I'm going to step in for somebody else is when it looked like it's about to get active. And I can see that because Kiana, she seems like she has sense about her. And I don't see her getting into a fight over some dumb stuff, especially with what who, all she has going for her. Who knows? I'm just saying it doesn't appear to me that she's like that. I, I'm just going off the strength of when she said not the time and place. Yeah. That means that Deborah looks like she's about to get active. Yeah. And Candace, obviously, when you heard what she said, she don't want to get active. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm not worried about you. Get on my face and things like that. But basically, I see it since they didn't show us anything. I see it as Deborah wasn't going to let her leave or wasn't going to let her like walk past her or things like that. So Kiana had to step in and basically be like, we're not doing that. Uh-huh. And I only know about those situations 
when the when there's a fight about to happen. Mm-hmm. And based on what we've seen on social media, because I don't think they're gonna show the fight on on TV, because you know I think it's just they don't really show fights. They show it like in flashes and things like that. Yeah, it was based off of somebody's defending someone. Um, because of, you know, whatever altercation they had, basically, or what you said. I don't think this is a situation to where um, Candace Twitter got her in trouble. I don't take it that far because Candace talk about everybody. So, like, no one should really take it personal when she talk about you on Twitter, right? Yeah, and Deb relied on people's husbands. So, so I like, mean, you should expect people to have something to say. So. so, I'm like, if Ashley brought her friend there to basically set her up to fight, and then, like, they don't fight, I'm just like, Ashley, I don't understand how Giselle get all the flack of being the manipulator behind the scenes when Ashley's the one doing it right in front of our faces. I think they're both trash. Well, Let's have a cash shake up. That's all. How about that? Well, <laughs> do you want to get rid of Karen, too? Wow. Uh, Karen can say. No, 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 no. If one go, they all go. No, I disagree. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like if Giselle go, they all go. Mm. Anything else? That's all I got. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe, like, share, comment, come back. I'm sure by this time next week, we will be reviewing the next episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. We got about 10 more. That's it? That's it. Y'all be good. Bye.